independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. We have a 13 story building with most of the building gone. This is going to be a high priority. I see many people on the balcony. There's, the building is gone. There's no elevators. There's, this is nothing. I mean, it, it almost resembles the trade center. A quarter of the building that's left, we still have people standing upstairs that don't need to be evacuated. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It is insane. It looks like, I was telling producer Anthony, uh, it looks like in Miami there, the Surfside area, that Beirut or even the Murrow building in Oklahoma City, it's half the building is gone. It is insane. How many people are dead? <clears throat> right now there's one. Some dramatic rescues already when it comes to some of the people they're rescuing. Some people, it is the absolute luck of the draw. But it's like half the building was like somebody came, like when you take a cake and you cut it in half, it's what it looks like. Um, we're finding out more information as it comes in, but you can see just how horrible it is. All the debris on the ground there. Oh my goodness, just watches this boy just getting pulled away from all the fire rescue on the scene. Some people really comparing this to um, even a 9-11 situation where they're just trying to rescue people as, as much as they can. This happening just hours ago, so people still getting discovered there. And this is just one example of that situation as that boy getting pulled. Yeah, and guess two in the morning? Something took place. What happened? Don't know. But it is really just crazy to look at this thing just falling apart. And you're like, what? And guys, because you would think automatically, oh my God, was there, was there, was this a terrorist attack? Uh, building is built in, I guess, 81, right there on the ocean. Just a giant mess. So, uh, Definitely something, and people are saying, "Well, they thought it was a storm." You know, I mean, they thought it was. They thought it was this. They thought it was that. They it, it just boom. Next thing you know, here it is, <clears throat> the rumblings. I uh, was in a deep sleep, and I heard a incredible bang. That I figured that it was a lightning storm, and it wasn't. Building falling apart. How many people injured, dead? Again, that's going to change throughout the next couple days. But uh, just an insane thing to look at. And it does take you back. And obviously, in the day and age that we live, the first thing that comes to mind is it, is it bad building? Is it, is, it, is it horrible construction? Is it something like that? And it's, the building's been around since 1981. It's seen its fair share of storms. It's seen a lot of different things. You would think to yourself, well, what, well, what could it be? Don't know. Do not know. But I tell you what, it is a, it is a sight. That's for sure. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Hope you are doing well. A lot of stuff to get to today. Yesterday, though, Biden, big talk, gun control. That's what you do. Part of it's summer. The uh, comprehensive strategy to uh, combat the epidemic of gun violence and other violent crime that has spiked since the start of the pandemic over a year ago. Crime is historically rises during the summer. And as we emerge from this pandemic, with the country opening back up again, summer spike may be more pronounced than it usually would be. So summer spike, be prepared. It's seasonal. Did you guys know that? I, I was not aware of seasonal. <laughs> Later today, it's going to be 102 over here with a chance of gunfire. So be prepared for that. Uh, over here, you may get stabbed, but that's okay. It's, it's stabbing season. And over here, it's just regular old theft. Heat does crazy things to people. We realize that. Gun violence is up. That's the reality of what's going on right now. There's a lot of different reasons for it. Yes, I'm sure COVID played a parts in some of this but not all of this desperation is always a big thing poor governance is always something that you should look at and say i don't feel like they're doing stuff that they should be doing this is a uh, very interesting audio from essentially the nypd on the streets of new york talking about what's going on and some of it is the fact that Desperation, 
bad, bad bail reform, a lot of different things are going on on the streets. The 4-6 was once known as the most dangerous square mile in America. Crime rates in New York aren't near the peak of the early 1990s, but they are spiking. Are you seeing this getting worse in pretty much every part of this area? Yes. Yeah. Growing up, I, like I said, I grew up in the South Bronx. I've never seen this. Shooting incidents in New York City this May were up 73% compared to the same period last year, according to the NYPD. That's massive. That is huge. 73%. 73%. That's not a that's not a small thing. That's a big thing. People don't want to be held hostage in their own neighborhoods. They don't. But it's happening. Yesterday I was talking to Alex Stone, our buddy from ABC News, and he and I were chatting over the fact that Chicago, 50 shootings in a weekend is about average now. It's 50 shootings in a week. It's no big deal. It's just 50 shootings. Think about the people in the neighborhoods where that's happening. Think about how they're being held hostage. Crime is up. Some of it, yes, is due to the fact that there's desperation. COVID has put a hurting on a lot of things. There's no doubt that that plays into it. But there's a lot of other things, and these things are things that have taken time. These things are things that have gotten us to a certain point because we continue to see the same thing over and over again. And when people are desperate and they want the opportunity to to have things now, uh, they go and do it. Drugs are a huge issue. It's a business to youngsters. They want stuff. And the younger are shooting at a high rate. In the 4-6, these officers find many of the shooters and victims are still in their teens. It's to see 16-year-old kids shooting and killing each other, mm. and that's what we do see a lot of here. We have 16-year-olds with robbery patterns and murder charges, and it's like they didn't actually get to be kids. Ask police officers and their commanders why crime is rising, and they describe a mix of factors. The end of the pandemic has brought residents out of their homes. Yeah. Desperation. That's a big thing. But what happens when you have, when you feel you have no hope, when you feel you are struggling just to put food on your table, when there's not a father figure around, when you feel just really screwed over? At least that's what you're being told on a daily basis by the system, right? By white people, by somebody else. I mean, all of these things add up. They do. And then you've got a bunch of other things. A lot of these cities, they've tried to do stuff to to continually help people who are, are poor but commit crimes. And not all of those crimes are crimes of necessity. We talked about it the other day. You're stealing a, a loaf of bread and, and some peanut butter because you're hungry. You can go, that person is hungry. It's a crime of necessity. They're not going to fleece that somewhere. You're stealing $1,000 worth of shaving things right and shampoo and stuff that you know you can go out and 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 get rid of that's not a crime of necessity that's a crime of opportunity the jump in new york city has also coincided with changes to policing and the justice system new york enacted bail reform to reduce or eliminate jail time for suspects while awaiting trial for many misdemeanors and nonviolent felonies police say this has had the unintended consequence of putting repeat offenders back on the street. I'll still be at work and they'll be back at the precinct picking up their property before I'm even done with court. Really? That's got to be frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And they know what's going to happen. They're going to be out in, in minutes. It is frustrating. We talk about gun control all we want. But the reality is, is last year, last year, three 100,000 people were denied opportunities to buy guns legally because the system said, no, sorry, flags were raised. People are going to do bad things, they're going to do bad things. That's the reality of it. Like everything else, though, we are a nation of reaction. Something happens, we react to it because we become emotional. How do we fix the problem before it becomes a problem? How many people out there go and get fit after they've had a scare with heart attack or diabetes? 
We didn't address it. One of the differences between us and our system here compared to a lot of the rest of the world in the westernized world when it comes to medicine is our system's great at fixing things that are broken. A lot of other places are great at preventing some of those things before they happen. And how do we do that? Well, you're not going to get investments into cities and into certain places, urban areas, if you continually have high crime rates, if there is no opportunity for parents, and in particular, parents of kids who want their kids to go to a good school because they really participate in their kid's life to have a choice to send their kid to a good school. And they're stuck in areas where they feel like it's just a revolving door, right? This is what happens. It's frustrating. How do we get there? How do we get out of that? And if you're a cop, you feel like you're hated right now. You feel like you're absolutely hated. Somebody, I'm going to read some, somebody text and tweeted me yesterday. Because we were talking about this. And we're talking about the, the guy in San Francisco that was eventually arrested because he had stolen so much stuff and everybody had made such a stink over the fact that he rode in four days in a row at a Walgreens and robbed them in broad daylight. It's nuts what some people think, though. And why would anybody want to be a cop today? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Oh, don't worry. we got some Britney stuff, too. The whole Britney thing is fascinating to me. It is absolutely fascinating what's going on. She's 40 years old. Is she all there? Isn't she all there? Should you just let her just fall apart and just if her life goes to hell, that's on you? If you're a dad, a mom, do you participate trying to protect your child from from it, it's a very fascinating thing because you can bring it down to the average person. We're going to touch on that. A lot of stuff to get to as well, including 3,000 year old attack of nature. 323 538 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Oh, my Lord. My pillow. My pillow's my pillow. The queen pillow. The one that started with the premium pillow. It's twenty nine ninety eight right now. Normally it's a lot more than that. It's same 40 bucks. If you want a king, it's five bucks more. Why, people say, why do you love my pillow? Right? Why do you love, I'll tell you why I love my pillow. First of all, it's never going to go flat. My, my sleep is great. My mattress topper is the best thing I've had when it comes to my sleep. But I love the fact that it's all made right here in the USA. It's made right here. When you see all the things that we're waiting on here, microchips, this, that, and the other, stuff's got to come from other places. It's made here. And that's great. Six-day money-back guarantee. Like it. Ten-year warranty. Made in the USA. Machine washable and dryable. Now's your chance to get the MyPillow premium one for $29.98, $40 savings. Simple and easy. Go to MyPillow.com, MyPillow.com. Use the promo code Benson and save big right there. Save big on all of the amazing discounts from the mattress toppers to the to the MyPillow itself to the the my slippers and the Giza Dream Sheets towels and everything. You can also call 800-983-4975, 800-983-4975, or MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. You stink like fear and white male privilege to me. I do often out myself verbally as a gender. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm proud to be a gender. Are you stupid? <laughs> Ruben! What? Are you kidding me? Not a great way to use your white privilege. Some people get it. Some people don't. You're listening to The Chad Benson Show. The emergency crews and whatnot, they... You know, being just a regular person, they don't want us to get in the way or for us to get hurt and endanger ourselves because, you know, the structure of the building is compromised. But it, it was one of those things. I would hope that somebody would come and help me. Yeah, surf slide. Miami Beach condo collapsed. Uh, 12 story part of building. Again, I don't sit here and play numbers game because it's going to over the next day and a half or so, two days. It's going to change, but there's no doubt uh, there are some issues. About 70 
of the 130 condos have been destroyed. It's interesting. In the article, I, the, the, here's something that has nothing to do with anything in one of these articles. The building, which contains 130 apartments, 70 of which are believed to be destroyed, is located one block away from Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump currently live. Oh, there. What's that to do with anything? Like, did they cause this? Is that what you're insinuating? Is that, is, is that what you're trying to do? Like, oh, yeah, did you guys know that? That they lived, they moved in and this happened. There's been some dramatic scenes already, including the rescue of a young boy. He was just really panicked. Um, you know, he said that his mom was in there with him. Um, you know, his arm was pinned. So that's Nicholas Balboa. Uh, talking about the young boy, but the rescue is pretty dramatic in itself. Again, it looks like go back to the 80s and see Lebanon or what you saw in Oklahoma City. Just half this building looks like it just been sheared off. He looked to be all right. I mean, thank God. Um, other than just some some scratches and you know probably that'll end up being some bruising. Um, you know, he was he was fine for the most part. It's a horrible, horrible situation, uh, and we'll touch on it throughout the day. Like I said, it'll be. It'll be a few days while they figure out who, how, how many are missing, all of those things. You just don't know. And as it's things fluid as it is. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Interesting story that broke yesterday. He's an, he's a bizarre cat, to say the least. And uh, he's he's gone. A team has been on the scene and investigating. He was discovered just hours after a Spanish court gave the green light for him to be sent to the U.S. to face tax evasion charges. Just last week, he said via a video link from a cell, I am extradited. It is certain that I will spend the rest of my life in prison. Social media is abuzz with some speculating the eccentric 75-year-old may have had some dirt on people in high places. Yeah, we're going to touch on that. But John McAfee is an interesting character, to say the least. Also going to talk about police. Why would you want to be a cop now? Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. First time claims for unemployment insurance were down slightly last week from the prior week, resuming a downward trend that points to a healing labor market. There has also been a pickup in hiring, a declining unemployment rate, and a more optimistic consumer sentiment. Weekly jobless claims totaled 411,000, and that's still a bit higher than economists had expected. Nearly 15 million Americans were claiming some kind of jobless benefit. Yep. Jobs are important. We know that. What's going to happen moving forward? Some of these states now are starting to feel that now's the time to see if taking away that $300 a week is going to spur people to get back to work. We're going to find that out sooner rather than later, that's for sure. It's available. I know people, I I don't want to do that job. I get it. I get it. You're not marrying that job. Like, nobody says you got to sign a lifetime contract with that gig. I think the whole thought process is you do a gig while you have to. You do the things you need to do while you have to. If that's what you have to do. For some people, you're wanted. Right? Like, that's, here's the reality. Some people are always going to work. The skill set that they have, what they bring to something makes them, in good times and bad times, valuable to companies. For others, you're not quite sure what you want to do. Maybe your skill set is limited. So you're going to have to take what you get at this point in time. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from each and every one of you. Yesterday, Biden rolling out his gun control plan, taking some of that COVID money. I'm like, how much money did we print? 
next. A t- we have so much money, we're going to have to f- try to figure this out. Of course, gun dealers, looking at you. It's zero tolerance for gun dealers who willfully violate key existing laws and regulations. Zero tolerance. If you willfully sell a gun to someone who's prohibited from possessing it, if you willfully fail to run a background check, if you willfully falsify a record, if you willfully fail to cooperate with the tracing requests or inspections, we'll find you. We will seek your license to sell guns. We'll make sure you can't sell death and mayhem on our streets. It's an outrage. It has to end, and we'll end it, period. 99.9% of gun dealers don't want to lose their license. You know that. I know that. It's common sense. He's saying something. His, 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 yesterday, the whole pitch. But, you know, we're not getting to the root of it. You're blaming a gun for something. We're always looking to blame the gun. It's the gun's fault. Like, don't get me wrong. I look at that and, yeah, I mean, would it be would it be great if we can live in a utopia where we all ran around and sang Kumbaya and, and you know, instead of the gun shooting bullets, they, 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 they shot what? They shot marshmallows and gummy bears? That's not the reality of the world that we live in. Do I think everybody needs to have a howitzer? No. Do I think it's their right to if they're law-abiding citizens? Absolutely. But when it comes to what we see out there, 99% of the people who are going out and shooting and doing things, especially young kids, they're not getting their guns from said gun. Well, Chad, there's a straw buyer, and there's this, that, and the other, and it's, it's, it's theft. It's theft. There are some people out there that are shady, but it's not hard if you really want to. Find a gun. Makes the cop's life worse. Makes everybody's life worse when it falls in the hands of the wrong people. The people that end up having to confine to some of these, to me, just overreach and ridiculous are the people that what? The people that will because they're about obeying the law. But it's odd, right? Like they're, you think that criminals are going to go, oh yeah, I should totally do that. You ever seen when they do buybacks, gun buybacks in places? It's like everybody brings like rusted guns. Like this is a musket. Because the people that have guns and want to use guns for whatever reason, protection on the streets, to protect their turf, uh, gang violence, send a message, whatever it is, they're not giving it up they're not so we address how do you get to that position how do you get the position to stop them from doing that well you got to offer hope you got to offer opportunity you have to desperation my dad used to say it nothing the, the the most terrifying animal on the planet is a desperate man with nothing to lose. You're 18, 19, you're looking around, maybe you didn't graduate high school, right? Your dad's in and out of your life, if you even see him at all. And your mom's working a couple jobs, you're struggling, you have no, you have no family like connection with people, even with your mom and them, other people are offering you opportunities to quote unquote be a part of something. Gang life is one of those things. There's a lot of different things to go into it. How do we get to that point where we can start to prevent some of that so we don't see the vicious cycle over and over? It's addressing the issue. That's why I said when when Kamala Harris went to, you know, Honduras and did her, you know, the the triangle kind of visit thing that she did on immigration, yeah, you gotta address the issue first at least talk about, hey, why do you guys suck so much that everybody wants to leave your country? What do you do with all the money we've sent you? That's a fair question. And these are the questions we need to ask the generations. Part of it is so many kids are being told, this is it, this is as good as it's going to get, right? You're growing up here in Cabrini Green. 
you're growing up here in, in you know, South Central. You're growing up. This is kind of it. And the, the, this, this, this mythical boogeyman, the man, the white man, the corporate guy smoking a cigar, he is going to always keep you down. And you know that's a bunch of crap. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. And, yeah, there might be more obstacles. But without hope, why would anybody want to say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I got no hope, but, uh, you know, I'll just sit here and languish and eventually just perish. No. You got to address it. You do. And some of that comes with being a cop, right? Cops are... We, what do we have with policing right now in America? Cops are hated. Cops are absolutely hated where once they were celebrated because of George Floyd, because of what took place now. This is a, this is a, yesterday we were talking about the crime uh, thing in San Francisco. This is what somebody sent me. Shut the blank up. Nobody wins if we're soft on crime, because I said that. Who wins if we're soft on crime? Just out of curiosity, who wins? Good. And start punishing these racist, murdering police officers that is also a blanking crime, you racist. Solid. Fun. Nobody wins when we're soft on crime. How about the people that are stuck in areas where they are stuck, literally? Their neighborhoods are a mini war zone on the weekend. A family party, cookout, a trip to church, caught in a gunfire, crossfire. Those things are real for some people in certain neighborhoods. For all that we hear about Chicago and how dangerous it is, you get out in other parts of the city. It's one of the safest cities in the world, but you wouldn't know that because there are places where people are stuck. And it's sad. Policing's a huge part of it. I wouldn't want to be a cop today. Night after night after night. The clashes in Portland were relentless, and many police officers felt targeted. Morale, I think, is at an all-time low now. The precinct where Officer Crota Runsuck works is still boarded up more than a year after George Floyd's murder. We're being held responsible for the actions of an officer that's across the country, and I don't think that's fair. Since last July, at least 115 Portland officers have left the force, either by resigning or retiring. There are now barely 800 left. Think about that. Why would you want to be a cop? So, George Floyd, Portland, Minneapolis there. Antifa, chaos, craziness, the clashes that go on there, the insanity of which, you know, Wheeler, who's the, the mayor, and uh, the, has allowed to continue to go on over and over again, stopping the cops from trying to do their job. All the while, now people in downtown Portland are being kind of held hostages. Stuff's burning. They burn down. You, you name it. What's the day? We're going to attack this place. It's no big deal because, you know, bad things. We don't like you. Well, let me tell you what happens when you get rid of cops who come on the job for the right reasons. Who do you think sticks around? Just curious. Who do you think sticks around? You think that helps the community? No. Just last week, members of the city's rapid response team resigned from that unit after one officer was charged with excessive force during a protest last year. We're stereotyped. Daryl Turner is the police union's executive director who retired in January. We're dealing with rioting at a level and a sustained violence that we've never seen before. Gun violence in a city like we've never seen before. We're looking at the most catastrophic staffing levels we've ever seen before. It's a problem that's exploded nationwide. Several cities have faced calls to defund the police. Others have slashed budgets due to COVID. More and more officers say they feel villainized like never before. Again, why would you want to be a cop in today's world? Crime is on the rise. Defund the police, which is not a winning thing. Reimagining of police is what we should be doing. Reimagining where policing should go is what we should be doing. Absolutely. But it all ties itself together. Guns on the street, drugs, violence, policing, the places that need policing the most. People are like, we don't like cops. They're the ones who are the most desperate, who need better policing 
it is a frustrating situation, but it's the cycle that continues over and over again. And if people don't want to fix it, what are you going to do? These cities are being, in many places, are held hostage. You go and look at San Francisco, right? Petty crime, but violence is up. Seattle, Portland, Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, all on the rise. Because cops are bad, guns are available, they're not buying them from Big Five, and cops don't want to do their jobs. They feel like it's a no-win situation. They're making business decisions based on what their look is going to be. And am I going to get in trouble? That's not how you do it. It's like playing prevent defense in football. I don't know about you guys if you ever watch football, but prevent defense never seems to work. It always seems to allow the team to score in the last second and win the game. If we're going to have better streets, crime's got to be down, you're going to have to be harder on crime. Well, you can't do that because then it's going to disproportionately hurt the people of color. Does it hurt some of the people of color who are committing crimes? Yes. But does it help a lot more people? Yeah, I'd say absolutely. It's sad. This is the world we live in at this moment in time. And so much of it has to do with media and politics and not reality of the people who are going through it day to day. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. Your love, your hate, even. Well, I don't really care about that person who sends me that. He sends me something horrible every day about, it's just a, you're a racist. Really? Is that, that's the best you got? Like that's, every day it's something like this. Every day you're awful. You're horrible. You're you're just like, (laughs) cops suck. They should all die. Blah, 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 blah. You sit back and you're like, why are you so, first of all, why do you continue to listen if you're that pissed and angry? I'm just curious. It goes for anybody. Like, I don't watch a television show that I hate. I don't. Some people do. Rough Greens, great for your dog, better for you. Let me tell you why. So my dog, Doodle, we used to take him to vet all the time. Cost a ton of money. Put him on Rough Greens last January. Over the last... 18 months, he has changed. His hips don't hurt. His his coat is better. His health is better. It's just a simple supplement that I put on top of his food, and he eats it up, and he loves, love, loves it. Give it to the puppies. You know what we're doing? We're preventing bills, which is awesome, because he was costing us a bit, and we were making serious decisions based on whether or not he, he was going to survive because he just didn't seem comfortable more with his bad hips. It's got vitamins, minerals, probiotics. It's got all this stuff, and K9 Vita Smart is incredible. So Rough Greens wants you to try it for free. And if you think to yourself, long term, is this yeah, long term? It's great because if you're giving your dog a chance to be healthy now, you're being proactive, which saves you in the back end when it comes to money. Ruffgreens.com/chad get you a free bag. You pay for shipping. Ruffgreens.com/chad or call eight three three my dog seventy seven. 833-MY-DOG-77. Get your bag of Rough Greens today for free. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. No fake outrage here. Just the real thing. The Chad Benson Show. Ugh. 323-538-2423. It's the text line. You can text me. Yesterday we touched a little bit on Britney Spears. Whole thing is crazy, right? Like, can we just admit that it's crazy? But I don't know what's crazier. And it's sad, too. It's the fact that she's going through this in, in, in the public's eye. Like, she's going through something that... of us would go through in private. Nobody would know anything about it because nobody would care. She's going in front of it. But I think what's weirder is the fans. And I was telling the producer, Anthony, that it reminds me of Michael Jackson when he was going through the entire thing, you know, with the the kids and Diddy or Didney and, and, you know, just that whole trial. And he comes out and he stands on top of the car and he's... It's just watching some of these people 
who were just so invested in 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 her and it's just ugh, some of it is <sighs> She's a human being. This is a civil rights issue, a human rights, a woman rights, and a disability rights. So wait a minute. That's a lot of rights. First of all, if she's mentally, if they find her incompetent, you know, these all these things, or that she can't do it, that's, you, you can't be, <laughs> she's a human being. She's all these things. She gets all these rights and a disability. And I'm like, okay, well, if she's she's not disabled unless you think mentally she has issues. Because then if she does, then there's a reason for the conservatorship. But watching some of these people out there is just, wow. She's a sweet girl who has been... First of all, how do you know she's a sweet girl? Just curious. She's a sweet girl who has been paying her daddy's bill and paying the rent since she's been nine years old. Some of that might be true. Absolutely. But the whole thing is just kind of sad. It really is. It's sad. Sad, you know, her speaking yesterday talking about stuff, feeling like she's being sex trafficked and, you know, a lot of just things that are going on. And, you know, it's just, it is a sad thing that people, and I, by the way, I just don't think it's her dad. I think there's a lot of people out there that look at her as a giant paycheck. And you get to that point where you become a brand in an industry, it's probably somewhat understandable, but it's sad. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. We have a 13 story building with most of the building gone. This is going to be a high priority. I see many people on the balcony. There's, the building is gone. There's no elevators. There's, this is nothing. I mean, it, it almost resembles the trade center. A quarter of the building that's left, we still have people standing upstairs that don't need to be evacuated. Massive collapse of a condo in Miami. How bad is it? Probably going to take a, a, a long time to get through this, but it is, uh, it's just shocking to see how it looks like. I was telling producer Anthony, I said, you go back and you look at like those old pictures of, of Beirut or even some places in the Middle East where there was fighting going on and you've got this building that's, you know, seafront and it's just what you know, you live in. It's beautiful. You're on the ocean. It's got the, all the stuff. And boom, half of it sheared off like a bomb exploded. Boy's been pulled safely from it. But this is uh, it's an ongoing thing and will be. But it is just it's you, you look at it and you're like, whoa, what in God's name you because the first thing that comes to mind is eh, it had to be was it terrorism did something fly into it you know it's like what people are you know saying oh it's just like 9-11 it kind of reminds people of that i go back to it looks like like i said like what happened at the murrow building in in uh in oklahoma city it is just incredible to look at the northeast corridor of the apartment had uh, collapsed, approximately 55 apartment units. That is Assistant Chief uh, Ray uh, Jadala there. 35 were pulled out from the structure and part of the uh, collapse, but not from the rubble. And two were pulled from the rubble. Yeah, so including a young boy who was rescued. Uh, he was trapped. And uh, he seems to be, be doing okay, but, you know, it's, it's scary. The back side of the building was very quiet, being that most of the commotion and uh, emergency vehicles were on the main street on Collins. Um, so it was quiet. I was able to hear um, the boy that was pulled from the rubble uh, yelling. And it was just, uh, again, it, it's uh, some of it is just you look at it and you're like, whoa, like how did anybody survive that? Somebody who heard something and thought, well, it's just, it's got to be a storm. I uh, was in a deep sleep. And I heard a incredible bang that I figured that it was a lightning storm. It was not. 
I think you're thinking Thunder. But just a very weird thing when you see a building like that. It's built in 1981. It's about 150 units, 130 units, give or take. And uh, at least 55 or so of them are just gone. And it looks, and what's interesting, and if you look at some of the pictures, if you don't really look down, you think, well, where'd all the stuff go? And then you look down and you see that all of it is just a pile. But at first, it just looks like like a, like you know a piece of cake where you take it and you you chop it off and you're like, okay, well, where, did somebody take that piece of cake? Or what happened there? And then you look down and you're like, oh wow, like that that is ugly. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. You know, critical race theory is it's 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 a battle that's going on, right? You got the right and the left. But you got the extremes on both who are trying to do stuff. You have the extremes on both who are, one of them is it's the worst thing in the history of the world, and it's evil and it's bad, and it's it's teaching you to hate America, and I think there is some 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 issues that are absolutely right about that, and that, that there are some things there that are uncomfortable to talk about is one thing. But some of it feels very punishment-like and destructive and divisive. And on the other side, you've got people that say, well, this is what needs to happen. And uh, everybody should hear everything about all of it. And it's it, and again, some of them are right. We do need to talk about certain things. There's ways of going about doing it that don't need to be divisive. But we don't do that anymore. All we do now is fight about stuff. And... It's nuts. It's nuts. Efforts to limit what teachers can teach have been successful. About 25 states, that's half the country. What does that say to you about the attitude towards teaching students about systemic racism? What it says is that as educators, we must continue to lift our voice to ensure that our students have the truth. When you teach them the truth, they have the creative imaginations to make a difference so that they can actually confront the injustices that have been built into every social system within this country. And the world, by the way, just to let you know. Again, part of it is it, it, it feels like you're just you're 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 looking at children and saying, hey, kids, you got to fix all the stuff. We we're, My issue with so much of critical race is very divisive. I don't care what anybody says. If you go through some of this stuff and and some of it, again, not all of it's the same. And how it's taught is extremely important. Like anything, you get somebody who teaches, can talk about race and can talk about certain things in such a way where it's not divisive is one thing. But when you get activists who are more interested in, 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 and I, in, in very weird where creating victims in the classroom and so you've got the oppressed and the oppressor. And, th- and that's what like my son and my little brothers are going through, where they're looking around and saying to themselves, these are all their friends. And now it's like uh, they feel like, uh, you know, it- it's making it uncomfortable. It should be uncomfortable. Why? Because they're really good friends, and now you want to make everything uncomfortable and have division between them, and somehow that's going to make things better? Wrong freaking answer. Wrong answer. And I also think there's a time and a place, education-wise, that we should be doing some of these things if we're going to talk about it. But we have to talk about, too, the progressions we made, which in some, it's not. They don't want any part of that. They don't. They want no part of that. I think it was Bill Maher who said, you know, the, 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 the progressives have a progressive phobia. Like, they don't want to look at how far we've come, the progression we've made. They don't want any of that. The, 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 they have a phobia to that. It's always about continually punish, 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 punish. And it matters because most of you listening have kids. You have grandkids. They're going through some of this stuff. And you know, we went to schools about learning a little bit about history. Well, we should learn all the. You can't study everything all the time. Let's be real. And at some point in time, the basics. You know what I'd rather kids be learning? How are you coding? Do you know how to code? Well, no, because we spent three hours learning about critical race. So is that going to help you get a job? Well, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think probably not. No, there are things that 
They should be learning. And this is what's going to be happening in schools across the country. And I understand we do need to talk about things. Time, place, and a way to do such things. We should never underestimate our students' ability to not only learn about the complete and rich history of this country and make sure that they have the opportunity to be those problem solvers we need them to be so we can confront the institutional racism that this country uh, lives with every single day. And it's not just about history. It's about right now, as we very well know. Yeah, and there it is. We've come further than we, every single day, we take another step further. And, oh, Chad, it's getting, it's not. This is not the most oppressive time in the history of the world. This is not the worst time in the history of the world. It's not the racist time in the history of the world. It's not the most, uh, look at all the things that are going on in the world, not just here, but globally, when it comes to equity, when it comes to, 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 to trying to push forward equality, when it comes to, look at all of those things. Look at it. Is it perfect? No. But you're dealing with human beings. You're dealing with different cultures. You're dealing with a lot of different things. But my big fear has always been activism. This is a teacher in Texas, pissed off because Abbott, the governor, said, no, you guys are going to be teaching this crap here. We're not going to do that uh, at all. And she's pissed. Today is the first time our country has recognized Juneteenth national holiday and yet i'm getting ready to go back to school in the fall and my governor has put into place some ridiculous legislation that many governors across the country have put into place such as i can't teach anything divisive i can't teach critical race theory and i can't teach about racial equity this is at all public schools colleges and universities this is what's bull I can't teach things that are divisive. Why do you want people to be divided? We have enough of that already. We have enough of that. It, it is amazing when you hear something like that. Those are the things that you go, that right there is why people on the right are going, this stuff can't be taught. Because I feel it's more about punishing than it is progression and activism. So, teachers, in the past... <sighs> We've been activists. After this show of last year, we really need to stand up and do what's right for our kids right now. So this is a call to action, teachers. we got to stand up and fight for our kids because this is bullshit. We can't lie to them. That's the thing that you sit there and go, no. No, because you're, you're not going to talk about the progress. You're going to want to punish. You're not going to talk about the progress. You're going to want to make... Examples. You're going to want to make victims and oppressors. You're going to want to tell this kid, your life's going to be so much harder than all the other kids. And this kid over here, your life is a breeze and it's easy. And it's only because you're white or it's only because you're this. And it's only because you're, and by the way, the Asians are sitting there going, we didn't do anything and nobody's even addressing us. But if you don't think that is something, think about the guilty parents. Listen to this parent. I want you to listen to her. I found, I find this to be insane. This is a parent who took to TikTok. I'm going to play just, you know what? I'm not, we're going to talk about it. I'm going to play it here in a second. And I will tell you, when you hear this, you think to yourself, that is insane. About her child's tears. And what's going on with said child. When you guys hear this, you're going to be like, what? Are you kidding me? 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Again, we can talk about things as we should. We should confront things because it's great to do, right? You're just making a bigger mess if you don't confront some stuff. But we've confronted a lot. At the same time, there's ways of doing it without saying, hey, everybody, you guys were not involved in any of this, but it's all your problem. That's not a win either. It isn't. My pillow. It's a win for you. Let me tell you why it's a win for you. They make stuff in the U.S. of A. You understand that? All the stuff that's going on when it comes to like Amazon, they had huge sales across. Oh my God, look at all the stuff they did. Most of that stuff was made elsewhere. These are made here in the USA. Their pillows are awesome. Great night's sleep, no headache. 
Jack took mine the other day, so because he forgot his, so I'm I'm having to go with regular old pillow. It's not fun. I'll tell you that right now. Mattress toppers are amazing. The keys of dream sheets, the towels, you name it. It's all incredible. Six day money back guarantee, which is awesome. Ten year warranty. You will love these, and the discount's great. Twenty nine ninety five for the queen premium, and five dollars more for the king. Ten year warranty, six day money back guarantee, made right here. Never going to go flat with Stan's washing and drying. Go to MyPillow.com. Use promo code Benson. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. To save big, get a discount on all their amazing products. Call 800-983-4975. 800-983-4975. Make sure you use that promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. You go, boy. This isn't about right or left. This is just about right and wrong. Right you are, Chad. The Chad Benson Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let us take a peek and find out what is trending on the webs of the internet. Shall we? We shall. White Rage, which is not a band, but it could be. And we're pretty sure if it's not taken, it should be. We're going to talk about White Rage. And I've got a, I've got to play something for you guys here in a minute. I promise you I would. That is, it, it needs more time than what we have right now to play. But I will tell you, when you hear this, you think to yourself, you put that with critical race theory and white guilt, whew, that could be a, that could detour. White guilt opening up for critical race theory and white rage. That's a party. CRT. Oh, yeah. Apartment building or condo in Miami. Trending everywhere. Surfside Champlain Towers collapses a portion of it, trending right now, and it is uh, it is crazy if you've not seen it. Laura Ingram, people weighing in our remarks on withholding funding from the military during a segment of her Fox show last night, having to do with wokeness. That's part of that white rage stuff. Head on over to the magical world of Google. Critical race theory is trending, as is the Miami building collapse yesterday, though. Oddly enough, the two biggest things that trended, John McAfee, of course, you guys know him as the annoyance that pops up all the time saying that your security and vir- antivirus software is going to expire soon. Uh, he was whacked or committed suicide, depending on whether or not you believe his arm or <laughs> the fact that he was going to be ex- extradited back here from Spain on all kinds of charges from tax evasion to Bitcoin stuff or or cryptocurrency. It was uh, crazy. Trey Young, million people in the last 24 hours. Last night he led the Atlanta Hawks to a victory, the first game of the Eastern Conference Finals. But he was amazing last night. I watched a bit of it, and he did a move where he did a crossover and faked the guy out so bad he stood there, kind of looked at him, and then gave him a little shimmy because there was nobody around him, and then hit a three. And I was like, what? That was crazy. Matt Getz, he's trending. Uh, he's a wanker. I'm just going to say it. I got no problems with that. I spent some days with him doing stuff. I it's what I think of that. That's what I'm going to say right that guy. That's it. That's it, mate. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, my Lord. And the filibuster always trending because, you know, get rid of it. I know B- Bill's like, we should suspend the, fi- the filibuster. You know, uh, we should. That's what I tell Hillary all the time. We should suspend marriage vows. So I go out and think it's a little bit, of, a little bit of strange. You know, come on back. Unfortunately, Chad Benson show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. 
This is Chad Benson. It is important that we train and we understand. Uh, and I, I want to understand white rage, and I'm white, and I want to understand it. So what is it that caused thousands of people to assault this building and try to overturn the Constitution of the United States of America? What caused that? I want to find that out. I want to maintain an open mind here, and I do want to analyze it. It's important that we understand that, because our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Guardians, they come from the American people. So it is important that the leaders, now and in the future, do understand it. I've read Mao Zedong. I've read, I've read Karl Marx. I've read Lenin. That doesn't make me a communist. So what is wrong with understanding, having some situational understanding about the country for which we are here to defend? And I personally find it offensive that we are accusing the United States military, our general officers, our commissioned, non-commissioned officers, of being, quote, woke or something else because we're studying some theories that are out there. That right there was uh, our big general, head of the Joint Chiefs, right? the guy, answering something from Matt Getz, who is, I'm going to be honest, all right, for those of you guys who don't know, two years ago, we did a thing at the border with Andy Biggs, who's the congressperson to Matt Getz, and I went down there and spent a couple of days down there on the border with them, and we were doing a bunch of stuff. And I came back, and I the first thing I said to everybody is, that guy's a douche canoe. He's awful. He's just... He's... And, and and look, he may, maybe he's in your district, right? Maybe that's your dude, right? Maybe... I, I will tell you, from just personal experience, right? I don't get it. I don't get 90% of the politicians. When it comes to who who hired you, you know, meaning who voted for you. But he's just something extra special. And he, he's a troll. And he loves it. And there's a segment of society that absolutely loves that stuff. They live for that crap. They do. They live for the confrontation and to watch, quote unquote, their side get over on the other side. And he tries to do that. And he says the right things trolling. And the reality is, is, is I don't get it. I don't. Look, should our military be woke? Hell no. You know what the military will tell you about? What do they do? You come in as an individual. Their goal is to break you down and essentially make you one. They're there to break stuff, blow stuff up hopefully rebuild some stuff, and to protect our country, help our allies. Should we be inclusive? And when people say, the, the bad word about inclusive is like, you want, you want to make it so like, okay, so we're inclusive now. So it means everything and everybody's throwing it. No, the whole thing about this is, yeah, we should have people in the military of different faiths, different walks of life. None of those things are wrong. Do we need to make it a kinder, gentler military? I don't think so. I think it, what it should be is what it is. You, you come in there and you break things down uh, and, and get people to act as one on behalf of each other. And and then if things go south, you, uh, you break stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's what it's there for. Now we've now along the way we have changed in so many ways. Our military's expanded to the point where it's massive and the things that we do are, are incredible and it's not just about that. But that's kind of like when you go there, that's the whole thing, right? Respect, yes sir, no sir. Yeah, so all things being equal, of course we should welcome. But we shouldn't be woke. There should be none of that. There should be you are a Marine. You're in the Army. You're in the Navy. You're in the Air Force. Who are you? You're an American. You're a military person. This is who you are. That's all that anybody should know or care about. Now, remember what they used to say? Name, rank, and serial number. That's Now, if you got taken, your name, your rank, which you probably disagree with, your serial number, how you identify, your pronouns... What? I prefer to call they, them, Zed. Is it Zed or Z? Zed. I don't even know. But you'll hear that all day today. 
And then the way that it's been edited in some other things, it gives only a portion. And should we study the likes of Mao? Well, military leaders do. You go back and look at what Patton did. Patton used to read Rommel all the time. He used to go back and look at all the military leaders across the board. Why? Because he wanted to get an understanding of what the hell these people were about. Of course. But white rage. You know, so much of it is, is white guilt. Is there white rage? Yeah. Why? And I've said this for years, especially for older people, right? What's going on when we come to talk about the, the race in this country is essentially the isms and the hardcore biases are dying out. They're like old technology. Your great-grandmother... Your grandmother, you love them. They have some biases. They grew up in a different time. They're antiquated. Their thought is antiquated. They're the typewriter. They're the, t- right? You know, that's it's kind of what they are. We live in a different world now, and that's an amazing thing. And, and our kids are living in a different time than when we did. And then their kids are living in a different time. And all of these things are going on, and they're all happening. Right now, this division with the critical race theory and the insanity of it is just, it's, it's, it's nuts. And it is divisive. And you've got teachers out there who want to be activists and not educators. And they're fine teaching division. And I'm not talking about long division like you'd learn in mass. I'm talking about divisive and divisive issues. And then you've got white guilt. And that, to me, is something I just sit back and I laugh at. This is a woman... I told you guys she's going to play. This is a woman who, uh, well, her baby's crying. And uh, that little girl needs to understand nobody wants her white tears. Oh, my Lord. So this morning, the baby woke up and had some sort of violence in her heart. I don't know what it was. But- By the way, I do not know how a baby wakes up and has violence in her heart. Just, I'm throwing that out there. I've never, like, Jack never woke up at, and said, like, dude, I, I don't, I just have this urge to be violent. It was never anything like that. Sorry. Here, let's start it again. So this morning, the baby woke up and had some sort of violence in her heart. I don't know what it was, but she has been losing her mind all day. And it's interesting because I'm watching her lose her mind and then I'm watching the preteen respond to that by trying to make her happy. And I have had to like actively tell him, stop trying to make her feel better, stop responding to her tears. It's so interesting to see the conditioning of people responding to white girl tears happening so early. White girl's tears happening so early. Violence in her heart and you're conditioned because of white girl tears. Because apparently no other child of color cries. Like, no other brother or sister that's older, like, if you, if, you're, if your child's black or Hispanic, you, you don't comfort that child. You, you, this isn't tiger mom. This is white guilt mom. She's five, and she's got an 11-year-old coming after her, trying to make her feel better when she cries. We have to unlearn this whole business that white women crying is going to get them what they want in life because that ain't it. Now, if a guy said that, they'd be like, see, you hate, you're a part of the patriarchy. That's nuts. You couple that with what's going on out there and the activist world of, of nuts and why these things truly matters because they're creeping into every part of society on a daily basis. Over the last two weeks here, I have seen hours upon hours upon hours of people being inside meetings on Zoom and going to inclusivity meetings and talking about things and pronouns and this, that, and the other. And and you sit there and you're thinking to yourself, you're spending hours upon hours upon hours of of doing these things and you sit back and you're like couldn't this been done with one meeting couldn't it did common sense leave no because everybody's checking something everybody's dotting 
and I and crossing a T because they're worried about white rage taking over. They're worried about all of these things happening. They're worried about somebody misgendering or mispronouncing somebody and, and being sued. They're worried about all. It's seeping into everyday world. There's now genderless clothes. What the blank is that? These are Levi's, but they're genderless Levi's. Weren't they always? I mean, honestly, you get the, you know, 501, you know, when they, girls warm, guys warm. These are genderless shoes. They're tennis shoes. They're, they're Converse. Of course they were. Well, no, now they're all going to be that way. Is that the world we want to live in? This bizarre world of beige? Here's the good news. Everybody's the same. We're all beige. The beauty of what makes our country awesome, having traveled everywhere and done a lot of different stuff, is the uniqueness is the fact that we are different. The uniqueness is the fact that we have all kinds of cultures here. That was so awesome, right? Like, that's just it. And that was America, part of that. But there was a spirit here. Ah, America's awesome. It's great. It's just that. Now it's America sucks. Everybody else's culture is pretty damn good. Probably way better. Nobody else has ever done anything. If you're white, you're full of rage. You wake up and you're a child and you're crying. It's only because you have hate in your heart, apparently, or you're part of violence. It's, that is not a recipe for long-term success. This is a battle that's going on. And... People better start speaking up about it. It's not about we should learn about the past. We absolutely should. It's not about whether or not we should talk about things, whether it's the LGBT community. It's how we talk about them in perspective of where we used to be to where we are. But none of this is about that. It feels more about punishment than, than progressing and it's just it's a sad state that this is this is where we are and it pisses me off because we should not be here we're, we're we're in the best time in human history in the best country we've opportunities all in front of us and the civil war that has started if you will is is a cultural civil war and it's fine to have differences, and it's fine to argue and fight uh, in, in, in the right way and debate each other. But I look at this stuff, and I think to myself, this is, this is what the Founding Fathers worried about. Not somebody coming from the outside, but on the inside, rotting away. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at me. Text the program. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. been giving it to my dog, I was talking about earlier the money I save. And people say, how do you save money? I said, well, my dog, I take him to the vet all the time because his hips were so bad. We we're trying to do everything we could to make him feel better, and we didn't know what to do. And so we started giving him rough greens. And what it's done, because it's got vitamins, minerals, probiotics, uh, omega 369, it's got digestive enzymes. It's just this supplement you put on top of it. It's, it's made it so we don't go to the vet. We haven't been to the vet in like a year plus because his arthritic hips are. You you wouldn't notice it. You wouldn't notice the fact that 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 he, he would think he's like four or five because his coat is so shiny. If it wasn't for the fact that he's got white around his chin, he, you would think he's much younger. But being absolutely not reactionary, but forward thinking and taking care of your animals like that will save you in the long run. That's what Rough Greens does. Get it right now. Try it. It's a bag for you for free. Ruffgreens.com slash Chad. Go there, grab it, you pay for shipping, put them to the test. If you don't like it, no harm, no foul. But I think your dog's going to love it, which will be great for you and your bank account because you won't have to take them to the damn vet all the time. Roughgreens.com slash Chad or call 833-MY-DOG-77. 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Don't get into politics. As an ordinary suburban housewife, I feel a little disrespected. I teach my children not to name cops. You 
Oh, man. Um, guys, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? Chad Benson. I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cotton Eye Joe. I've been from Cotton Eye Joe. I've been married. Little rednecks there. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Swedish band, by the way. This was their big hit. Little Cotton Eye Joe. Kentucky last week. All you have to know is there is apparently a country rave. That's what they're calling it. America's wildest and craziest country party was in a Kentucky town so small, doesn't even have a stoplight. This is what they promised at the Redneck Rave. Five-day country party, party put on by country rapper Justin Time that promises mud, music, and mayhem. 50 people basically were charged with criminal activity, including gruesome injuries like slitting another person's throat. We're not done there yet. Severed fingers. People that were so intoxicated they had to go to the hospital. The sheriff said, look, we knew this was going to be a problem. So our whole goal, because they were overwhelmed, was essentially to just contain it. So we don't have the manpower and coverage for this. Man, we're trying everything. You know, hold on a second. I just don't know what else to say. We're doing everything we can, but they just not like we're going to be able to do. Yeah. You know what's really interesting? Phil, you will know that. You will be happy to know this. That is uh, Annika Lundberg right there, the lady singing. She actually follows me on Instagram. <laughs> really? It's a trip. I'm like, she looks familiar. And I'm like, oh, my God. I don't know why. I must have said something or done something that she thought was interesting. And she goes, oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll follow that guy. Don't know why. Do not know why you would follow me. 323-538-2423. I'm kidding. You need to follow me at Chad Benson Show. Horrible scenes in Miami. How many are missing? Anywhere between 40 and 60 people missing. Is a department building, half of it collapsed. Mayor Charles Burkett. It doesn't mean to me that we're going to be successful, as successful as we would want to be to find people alive. One boy was rescued. They're making more uh, rescues in certain parts, but it does look really bad for a lot of the other things. Uh, And if you see this building, like I said, it takes you back to the mid-80s with Lebanon and some of the Middle Eastern cities where you had cities and buildings were completely, you know, some of them were missing half the building and it's just rubble in a certain area. It is absolutely awful to look at. We'll touch more on that. Follow along again, all social media, at Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Witnesses told local TV affiliate WPLG people are currently trapped inside that building and a search and rescue operation appears to be underway. One neighbor who lives nearby says he felt his own building shake when the collapse happened. When the dust cleared, there was the back half of the building or back two thirds of the building was gone. It's down to the ground. Miami-Dade Fire Rescue and several other nearby municipalities responding. Yeah. It's a Champlain Tower South Condo in Surfside, Florida, right there in Miami area. There's a closed-circuit TV footage of it collapsing, and oh, my God. It feels like if you were just watching, she had no idea what was happening, you think, was there a bomb? Was there a bomb? 
Or was this one of those situations or you'd look at it and you say, oh, my God, they didn't get the dynamite right because they're taking that building down. Right. It's like one of those things where they're taking a building down. It just falls apart. Currently, 50 plus people missing. This is what it sounds like when they were calling into the police and the police were trying to deal with all this stuff. We have a 13 story building with most of the building gone. This is going to be a high priority. I see many people on the balcony. There's, the building is gone. There's no elevators. There's, this is nothing. I mean, it, it almost resembles the trade center. A quarter of the building that's left, we still have people standing upstairs that doesn't need to be evacuated. Yeah. It's been some dramatic rescues already, but how? It's the question that people will want to know. That will be figured out in the next several days, weeks, and months. Obviously, you got to rule out everything, but it's on the oceans. Now, it's not like it's not withstood stuff in the past. It's built in 1981, about 130 condos, of which 55 or so maybe a little bit more collapsed and people are missing and it's going to be a fluid situation this is the mayor charles burkett it doesn't mean to me that we're going to be successful as successful as we would want to be to find people alive yeah don't know because after the dust settled and you could see the building itself, I was telling everybody, it's like, go back to the Murrow Building in Oklahoma City, go back to, you know, the 1980s, if you were old enough to remember, like, well, well, Beirut's a mess, you know, you see, you know, you go looking like Lebanon and some of these cities where, like, half the building's just sheared off and it's just a pile. At first, you don't really see it, but when you get it from different angles, you can just see, it, it does harken back a bit to, to, to Oklahoma City, even 9-11, some people are saying, as far as just, just giant pile of, of rubbish and, and, and some of it just looks like it, it turned to, not liquid, but sand. And do not know, do not know what happened, but scary. And uh, we're keeping our eyes on it. But like I say, it's going to take a couple days to figure everything out from there, doing everything but a horrible situation uh, out there in Miami. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. You know, people are starting to ask the question about uh, what's going on with the vaccine because younger men in particular are coming down with a thing called myocarditis, uh, which is uh, inflammation of the heart. And is it worth it to take it? Is it not worth it to take it? And this is mostly people under the age of like 25, 26. Let me just say at the beginning, all the cases of myocarditis, which is something that's reasonably worth investigating, were easily treated. They were mild cases. So we, we do know that at this point. How they actually look at the risk-benefit ratio, that's what this comes down to. For females, if out of a million second doses that are administered, you would prevent 8,500 cases of COVID, 183 hospitalizations and one death, versus 8 to 10 treatable myocarditis cases. Translations, do the benefits outweigh the risk well, of course when you if, if it's just straight numbers like that and that's why you, you've seen more and more you know scientists even some doctors when they talk about especially a younger generation like my son could there potentially be damage long term i don't think there will be i mean uh i think most of us if we're honest with ourselves no i don't think well yeah they rushed this thing look mrna has been here for for quite a long time being used in this way and or has it but they've been studying this stuff for years you go and look at you know same thing with the dna on the johnson and johnson side we do that all the time that's been around but you do you know certain things that you wait okay should 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 you give this to children a little bit older if this doesn't really affect them long term well you don't want them to be sick no i don't want them to be sick in saying that do you want to take a chance as a what if scenario if Jack, Jack already had it. So we've all, we all had it. Uh, none of us were, you know, really sick or anything. My, my wife, she was, she was sick for a few days, but and, and none of us were really sick, sick. Uh, I didn't even know I had, it. I thought I was exhausted. It was Christmas time. I was beat. I've been working all year. We've been going like mad, mad crazy as far as work. And I do, I get here about three thirty to four in the morning. I have an hour drive in. I'm up early. So, you know, 
we didn't take really any time off. So I just thought I was really tired. And it was not, you know, I didn't think too much of it. But then everybody, you know, we tested the bottom. It was no big deal. We were fine. And this is somebody, by the way, I social distance. I did everything correctly. I got the vaccine anyways, uh, mostly because my on-air partner on my local show is very much a hypochondriac and, you know, germaphobe and all this. So he was, like, overly worried about it. And he would have he would have cut in line of all of the elderly to get the vaccine. But I'm 50. So I made a decision for myself and a decision I'm fine with where for a younger generation, you know, you look at your children, but I also think to myself, uh, kids aren't really getting sick and dying. Well, it has, yes, it's happened. But is it worth the risk is what some people are saying. Does it outweigh the risk? Well, yeah, because maybe potentially the spread, especially to the older generation. But all this plays into the fact that, you know, look, we're still in a situation where for for some states, they're not rolling like other states. Most states are back to normal. But you don't want to go backwards. For males, you would prevent 5,700 cases of COVID, 215 hospitalizations and two deaths versus 56 to 69 cases of easily treatable myocarditis. This is why they say the benefits outweigh the risks, but it'll come with a warning. People have symptoms, they should see their doctor and know that it can be easily treated. The young people seem to be developing a strong inflammatory reaction to this vaccine. If people have symptoms, sometimes it's chest pain, sometimes it can be some shortness of breath, know that this is a possibility and also know that it can be easily treated. Yeah. So, it's another thing people are looking out for. And it gives people who are not going to get the vaccine ammunition as far as they're concerned to go, ha ha, ha ha. Look at that. Look at that. Settle down there. Settle down. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Jobs today, by the way. It's that time of the week we talk unemployment, especially as we move forward. Biden has continued the moratorium on evictions. We have a lot of jobs that are available. Not everybody's willing to get out there and work, apparently. If you listen to Biden and the talking heads, of course, they're going to spin it as, well, it's because of COVID. Nobody wants to go back to work. Uh, some of that may be true, but a small portion of people. I don't know. I've, I don't know anybody who is at a point where that fear is so gripping that they're not willing to go back to work. A lot of it is they don't want the job they had, and they're making enough because they've got unemployment to at least get by and until they're forced to go back to work, which is what some of the red states are hoping to do. It's like, we're going to take away the $300 federally you get a a week and we'll see what that looks like. Are you willing to go back to work for that? Yes or no, but there's plenty of jobs available. First time claims for unemployment insurance were down slightly last week from the prior week, resuming a downward trend that points to a healing labor market. There has also been a pickup in hiring, a declining unemployment rate, and a more optimistic consumer sentiment. Weekly jobless claims totaled 411,000, and that's still a bit higher than economists had expected. Nearly 15 million Americans were claiming some kind of jobless benefit. Yeah. And there's plenty of jobs, again, available. A lot of people are, I don't want to go back to work. I don't want to go back to that work. This is supposed to be the great summer of of resignation, and people are going to be jumping from job to job, taking opportunities, knowing. But here's the thing. When I hear stuff like that, and I was trying to explain this to people the other day, it's like, well, people are resigning their job. Yeah, because people who are good at their job, people who are working currently, realize there are a lot of people out there, for whatever reason, who aren't ready to get back into the job market. And you, you figure out what that reason is. But if you are working and you're good at your job, you're using this opportunity to strike while the iron's hot and get more money elsewhere. You're you're, you're saying to yourself, they don't want the job. I'm already working. You're going to pay me more. If you want me, you're going to pay me more. I've got opportunity now to go from point A to point B. So I'm going to use that leverage in an employee marketplace So the great resignation isn't people quitting their jobs and going, I'm not going to do anything. It's resigning because they've got something else that's paying more or giving them the things that they want perks-wise. That always gets left out. They make it seem like everybody's going to just go off and, you know, like Kwai Chang Kang from 
kung fu would just roam the countryside with a flute and find themselves. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text said program. Raycon, best ear buds around. I love my Raycons. I do. I absolutely love them. Noise isolating fit, check. Soft gel tip, brand new one, is amazing. Different colors, better style. Uh, as far as the white ones, you can see the white ones are amazing, but there's no stems, there's no, there's no wires. There's the style, the fit, the sound quality, the charge time, the case that is its own charger. It's all there, but the price point is otherworldly. So if you're looking for the best earbuds around to start your summer off right, Get out there, have some fun, have a better earbud, a better sound quality, more control. It's Raycons. Stylish, fun, and a price point that's amazing. Right now, you're saving 15% by going to buyraycon.com slash chat. But when you go there, they're going to say, if you put summer in, you're going to save an extra 5%. That's 20%. Don't fool around. Do it right now. Buyraycon.com slash chat. Buyraycon.com Slash Chad by Raycon dot com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. I've been at this a long time. And there are things we know that work to reduce gun violence and violent crime and things that we don't know about. But things we know about, background checks for purchasing a firearm are important. Ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. No one needs to have a weapon that can fire over 30, 40, 50, even up to 100 rounds, unless you think the deer are wearing Kevlar vests or something. What if What if they were? Well, that's a new thing. They're not doing that. They're not doing that, Chad. Stop it. You're being stupid now. Biden's got a plan. He knows what works. By the way, background checks, 300,000 people last year were denied permits, just to let you guys know, just give you guys a sense of how many people were stopped last year from purchasing guns. Some of those may have been mistakes, you know, duplicate names, something like that. But the reality is, is that's pretty decent, right? 300,000? That's kind of what it's there for. Nobody needs to have that much. Nobody... Nobody needs to have a car that goes 250 miles an hour. Well, yeah, but it's, again, the fight that we have with so many of these things that we sit here and debate and argue about and the nuances and all this stuff, the, the argument's not the argument we should be having, the conversation we should be having. It's 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 not about, I know it stops it, and the stop is we'll do everything we can to make sure... Guns don't get into the hands of people to like to use them. No, how about we give people something to do with their hands? Hope, work, things like that. But that's not an overnight fix. And to do something like that, we have to talk about things that would make people uncomfortable. And we don't really want to do that in a woke world today because to do something like that's going to make people uncomfortable, which then people are going to start calling each other racist, or they're going to call each other all kinds of names that don't need to be called because we can't have nice things, and then somebody's going to say you're an oppressor, and then you're the oppressed, and it's, it's we can't have real conversations. We have decimated, in particular, the black families, government trying to help, right? You know, go back to the 60s, when the welfare state really took off, you know, no man in home. Over sentence black males when it comes to prison sentences and and seeing them in prison over nonviolent offenses and costing us tons of money and more importantly taking them out of homes and away from their children, which then increases stuff when it comes to violence and hopelessness. We've got crappy schools in the inner city where kids are learning on books where it's like it stops after like Jimmy Carter and Reagan. That's it. There's nothing else after that. 
As far as you guys are concerned, you guys made it to 1984. Let me tell you how this works. There's so much that goes, well, we need more money for education. No, we need a school choice. We need is an opportunity for that. We need better policing in areas and more policing. Well, they, but that's not, they're all, no, they're not all racist. So stop. That's a stupid false narrative that's put out there. Well, there are, there are bad cops. That's great. Yeah, they're bad doctors too. Absolutely. Super bad doctors. There's all, again, all false narratives. To deal with the things we want to do, it's about bringing investment into the inner city. And nobody's going to be investing in places if it's rampant with crime. And to blame guns for all the ills of this, isn't it? Anything in the wrong hands can be dangerous. But desperate, feeling like they've got nothing, that right there is terrifying. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Do love hearing from all of you. More on what's taking place in Miami. Massive collapse of a building. 13 stories. People missing. Horrible scene. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. And today, enough rogue gun dealers feel like they they can get away with selling guns to people who aren't legally allowed to own them. And I might add, the Second Amendment from the day it was passed limited what type of weapon you could own. You couldn't buy a cannon. If you wanted to think you need to have weapons to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. It's always been the ability to limit, rationally limit, the type of weapon that can be owned and who can own it. So, first of all, yeah, I think we can all agree a nuke would be bad. and People own cannons all the time. You can own a cannon. My God, you ever watch Pawn Stars? People's always trying to freaking come in there and go, all right, check this out. I, like to, I, I want to sell my cannon. And then they're like, no way, you got a cannon? And then what do they do? They all want to go outside and shoot the damn cannon. Like, isn't that kind of the way that that, that works? Or am I wrong? You can know, own a cannon. It's not like you're walking into like Big Five, going, hey, you guys have cannons? No. I'm going to go across the street uh, at that gun place. They said they didn't have cannons either. <laughs> Why? Is there a run on cannons? Is there... And I'm going to be honest with you guys here, too. Uh, I shot a cannon once. Like, you know, it was uh, it was pretty neat. We we're way younger, and they had like a small cannon you could shoot. You, know, you just by shooting. Let's be real. You're not shooting a cannon. You're lighting, right? The incendiary little little wick thing, and then boom. You're not. It's not a practical weapon. <laughs> oh my God, he's got a cannon. Move a foot to the left. Ah, oh, missed him. Yet yeah, we uh, look. I will be. I'll, I'll be one hundred percent honest. If somebody's getting a hold of a nuclear weapon, that is where I say, you know what? No, no, no. That's a that's a negative Ghost Rider. You never hear about drive by cannon shootings. <laughs> oh my god! Did you guys hear about the four that were killed in the drive by cannon shooting? No, I did not. Because it didn't happen. Oh, my Lord. I, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know what to make when I hear stuff like him. He's going to be a great salesman for the gun world. He is. He's going to be a, a, a real good salesperson because people are going to run out and do stuff. By the way, if you would like to, there's a Civil War cannon. Uh, it's 2700 bucks. It's hilarious. It's just, yeah, it's, people refurbish it. It's like nobody's selling it because it's like nobody's like, oh, I'd really like to have a cannon. This is what I'm missing. 
So I'm missing in my arsenal. I'm missing this in my arsenal. Just in case the pirates attack. I need one of those. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Uh, more than likely, about 50 people are missing. Maybe more. Horrific incident in Miami. Building collapse. You can see it. I, I tweeted it out on, there was a CCTV. That's a closed circuit for those of you. Uh, that was across the street. And it caught the moment the building collapsed and it is uh it's a horrible situation there's been a rescue of a young boy who was 10 years old but the reality is this is a fluid situation it's going to be that way for the next several days and it is just a a good portion of this building about 55 or so condos at the champlain towers in in surfside right there near miami just gone um, we're finding out more information as it comes in, but you can see just how horrible it is. All the debris on the ground there. Oh my goodness, just watches this boy just getting pulled away from all the fire rescue on the scene. Some people really comparing this to um, even a 9-11 situation where they're just trying to rescue people as, as much as they can. This happening just hours ago, so people still getting discovered there. And this is just one example of that situation as that boy getting pulled. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as more reports come in, witnesses to what took place uh, are talking about what happened. And some of it is just, you know, that again, you're you're there, you're you're relaxing, you're sleeping. It's early in the morning. And all of a sudden you're like, what, 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 the, what, the, what the hell was was that? I mean, it was crazy. I uh, was in a deep sleep and I heard a incredible bang that I figured that it was a lightning storm. Yeah, or thunder. Uh, Champlain Towers, Surfside, Florida. 55 of the condos are essentially gone. The towers themselves look like they were built in the early 80s, 1981. And if you watch and see the building collapse. It's 136 units. It's it's it looks like one of those things where they go to raise the building, which I always found to be weird. But we're going to raise the building by blowing it up. Where that you you see the the dynamite one two three four five, and then all of a sudden it goes. It's just like that, except only a portion of it. So uh, why they're going to look at everything from. Poor architect, and this is something that just doesn't, this is not something that happens here. We're not used to something like this. This isn't, you see around the world every day, you're finding structures all over that will fall down, that things will break, and and to us, this is, this is whoa, where in other parts of the world, they don't have the mechanisms in place to have the same kind of, not only architect, but access to materials, the the oversight, any of those things that we do. So something like this happening there's lots of questions. How is the biggest question after you get through searching for survivors? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. I found it interesting yesterday. I found this whole thing interesting about Britney Spears. And I'm going to tell you guys why. First of all, watching a human being meltdown in front of the world is, is, is different. It is. It's different. And she did. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There's a lot that goes into to to this story, and and you know, uh, and it, it and and this can be an every person thing. You know, Britney's different because she's famous, right? So she's on the cover of everything. They're fighting over millions in in assets, and you know, some say they're trying to protect her. The others are saying we're trying to protect her, but everybody seems to want access at it. It's a girl that's been sexualized since she was a young girl, uh, and and you know, it's. It, it, the whole thing is weird, but you know, every one of you right now in your lifetime may go through something like this. It might be with your mom or dad or your grandmother or grandfather, and that you become some sort of uh, keeper of 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 things, and then brother and sister, or you you know, even mom and dad, because grandma trusts you more or grandpa trusts you more, get involved, and things start to happen, and this fight comes, and you're in court, and you never thought about these kind of things. It's relatable, especially now as we live longer. 
But with her watching all of this, this is a mental health. It's not about getting all some mental health issue. And she said she's, you know, she's she's ready to be over this. But there's a lot of other stuff that that's inside of it that that's just weird. And one of them is, that, you know, uh, Brittany's never really asked for this to be over. That's kind of the one deal about this. And yesterday seemed to be the first step for her having her own voice because so much of the free Britney movement was about other people. She doesn't want to be a part of this conservatorship and she doesn't want any further psychiatric evaluation to be a part of the judge's determination of her future under this conservatorship. So quite honestly, it's unclear what happens next. There was a lot of discussion of dates that need to be put on the calendar for the next hearing and the next and the next. It seems like this is just the beginning of a long process. Yeah, the beginning of a long process. Uh... She said things and she accused him, you know, not only controlling the money, feeling like she was being trafficked, sex slave, have, have people forcing an IUD in her so she couldn't get pregnant. Uh, you know, she wanted to sue her family. She it, there's a lot of things to goes to goes in. And, and it's money. I mean, I've seen it with my family over. We had a, we had this this great aunt. Her name was uh, I think her name was everybody's called her Aunt Ted, but it was like Theodora. I always pronounce it wrong, but. She had a lot of money and she had a lot of stuff, and it drove the, a huge wedge in the family because my grandfather, not not his brother, got a good portion of, of like the custody of stuff, and his whole thing was he wanted to take care of her, didn't care about the money side of things, but money got involved and everybody else felt like they deserved something, a lady that they really never knew or anything, but there was money there, and that's so much of what this is. That's what the battle has become about, and she feels like, man, this... I'm being used. She made it very clear right out of the gate. She feels like this conservatorship is abusive, like it has taken over too much control of her life. She says, I deserve a life. The detail that she went into describing how scared she's been, how her family has done nothing to help her, how she's been embarrassed. It's it was heartbreaking, quite honestly, to listen to the tone of her voice and the feelings that she conveyed the judge saying that she hears her. On the other side of things. Again, she's had some opportunities, and she's never been the one that's called for this. The notion that she can do all these things and do them well, I'd be so curious to know what it is that's been presented to the court that has led a court to say, yes, this very high standard of literally saying to someone, you can't make decisions for yourself, um, has been achieved. Yeah. Why is that? But... That's a fair question. I mean, you can do all these things. Why can't you? Well, first of all, if you watch some of her TikTok, you'd be like, ooh. But other sides of things, is she said she didn't even know she could go in there and tell them that she doesn't want to be a part of this anymore. So her new attorney is done. Up until apparently a month or so ago, her and her father had a very cordial relationship. And while it was strained, it was not full of hate and anger. Uh, according to a lot of people. But this new attorney took over and said, you can do this, this, and this. But I always question, who are the people on the other side? And should you just be allowed to to be crazy with money, or eccentric, as we call it? right? Because so you're poor, what are you? Crazy. When you're rich, you're eccentric. But everybody's like, dad's a bad guy. He wants all the money. Although the conservatorship has helped save them some money. It costs money to run. And by the way, she's also surrounded by a ton of people that also want money. Is it his job to help? And then what doesn't help are crazies who are, I I don't get it, but they love Brit, right? Remember, fan is short for fanatic. What is happening is a civil injustice. No matter what Britney says today, and this is very, I want to make this very clear. No matter what Britney says today, we are here to advocate for the ending of her conservatorship. It was started without due process. It was completely unconstitutional. She didn't even sign on to it. She was entrapped into this conservatorship. It's voluntary, but it seems like she was intimidated. Again, she's had opportunities, and she's never been the one to put forward. When she's had a chance to get out of it, she didn't sign anything. And other people are saying, you know, uh, maybe some of that is true. And there are other parts of her that say, you know what, maybe this isn't the best thing for me to have access. 
but just watching this, and again, is it about her as a human being, or is it about her as a brand and money? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Let's have a little fun. Imagine going to work and getting a massive tip after the last year and a half of chaos and craziness and struggles. I'll make you smile a little bit. Chad Benson Show. Check out our Chad Benson Show Facebook page where you can hang out or hang your grievances out to dry. This is Chad Benson. Yeah, baby. Again, we're keeping an eye, and I'm sure over the next couple days, as the Champlain Towers in Miami, Surf, Surfside right out there outside of Miami, has collapsed. 55 of their condos uh, eviscerated. About 50-plus people missing give or take a few one person confirmed dead but again those numbers are going to change throughout the day could be five could be 10 could be 55 who you don't know if there were people inside there on top of that right you know a a husband a boyfriend a cousin an uncle somebody you have no idea what any of the you know you're just looking at the condo and say well these are the people that should have been in there we can't locate them you don't know if there were more people in there but a horrible, horrible, horrible situation. Uh, and again, the, the, the rescue effort is on. We'll hope for the best in terms of additional recoveries, uh, but we are bracing uh, for, for some bad news just given the destruction that, that we're seeing. Ron DeSantis there, uh, governor of Florida. We, we, need, we need some good news. Right? Like, you just don't want to leave it on a bad. You can't do it. Like when I used to play soccer, uh, I had a great coach. Said, you know what you do, mate? You never, le- you never finish on a bad because it's with you, isn't it? Right? And so for me, when I was playing striker in midfield, we'd be doing shooting practice, and I'd always make sure I bang a goal in, and it's, that's when you finish it. But then at the same time, he goes, now I want you to put it where the goalie can make a great save because I want him to feel like, boom, that's the last thought of practice that day. you got to finish on a good. Last year was tough on people. We all know that. Still lots of people cratching and clawing their way back to, hopefully, not just normalcy in the day-to-day functions of life, but money and stuff like that. And every once in a while, people are better than you think. And we don't hear much about it because if it bleeds, it leads. Well, this is different. Customers stopped into the Stumble Inn Bar and Grill in Londonderry and ordered up a couple chili cheese dogs, fried pickle chips, and drinks. The tab, with tax, $37.93 before he added a $16,000 tip. At first, the staff didn't even notice it. It was on the credit card statement. They put it down next to the register. And he said for three times, don't spend it all in one place. That's what made her flip it over and look. And she's like, oh, my God, are you serious? And then he's like, I want you to have it. You guys work high. First of all, that's what a lobster fisherman should sound like. I just want to admit, everybody knows that, right? He's like, oh, my God, are you serious? I mean, I could buy a calf for that. The eight bartenders working contacted the owner. Thought it was a mistake. I maybe a hundred and sixty dollar tip, and he got it extra to zeros. Talked to the gentleman, and he said, "No, it's sixteen thousand. He just said that they deserve it. They work very hard. They work very hard, and that is a good thing. If you have it, share it. Tipping is is great. If you can give, it's great. And to do something like that, think about the changing of, of lives, especially people who are who are like you know who are living right at that line. The Stumble Inn closed a few months during the pandemic, adjusted with takeout and outdoor dining. Like so many restaurants, it was a challenge for the staff, and they're paying it forward to their fellow employees in the back of the house. The back of the house works really hard. The kitchen. They're giving them a big tip out of that. The owner says every tip is appreciated, but this one is the biggest in the history of the Stumble Inn. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Always good to finish on a strong one that makes you smile. Little thing like that. Again, going a long way. You don't know. Somebody's getting ready to lose their car. They're struggling in ways you couldn't believe. And all of a sudden, they're walking home with a $1,500 tip. And so are all their other coworkers. Good thing.
323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program, follow along across all social media. Chad Benson Show TV on the YouTube as well. Have a great, wonderful rest of your day, and we will do it again tomorrow. Is that? Oh, ah, I see Friday. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.